What's up guys and welcome to Celtics Direct. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. You'll be helping us out and also be kept updated on all of the latest Celtics content. And also check out our latest Celtics inspired fan merchandise all on our website. That being said, let's get right into the video. Welcome to the All About 18 podcast brought to you by CelticsDirect.com. I'm your host, Matt Poirier. And I'm Trevor Paranella. And we're going to talk about how the Celtics met expectations this season. And get into individual players and see their future for this team. So, like, what did what were your expectations for the team as a whole coming into the year? Pretty much exceeded them a little bit, but not too much, to be honest. I mean, the one seed was kind of a gift. But in terms of the playoffs, I mean, we got Al to separate ourselves from the the Hawks, the Pacers, the Wizards, the Heat, all those teams. We were expected to be better than all of them. I mean, I don't think they, like, rose above extreme expectations that some people think, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I thought they pretty much met the expectations because coming in, they got Al, and everybody thought they'd be a two-seed. And then they really, I mean, technically... They should have been the two seed, but the Cavs played worse than everybody thought they would. And they also like kind of gave up on getting the one seeds. In terms of regular season, I thought they kind of met the expectations. And then in the playoffs, they definitely I think they definitely met Celtics fans expectations for making it to the conference finals. But I think other people didn't expect them to make it there because they thought the Wizards or the Raptors were better. And maybe the Raptors beat us because they're just a worse matchup for us. But still, we made it to the conference finals. So I think they... They met expectations in the regular season and the playoffs. Yeah, sure. I think they definitely locked out the fact that they didn't get... they A, they avoided the Cavs until the Easter Conference Finals, as we all saw that didn't go so well. But also, we did avoid Toronto, which I think was huge, just because of the matchup. I didn't think they matched up well. And I always said from March on that they matched up better with the Wizards. I think the Celtics and the Cavs had some like unspoken agreement because the Celtics wanted the Wizards because they're a better matchup for us. And the Cavs wanted the Raptors because they're better matchup for them and because the Wizards gave them problems during the year. Yeah, and I think, I mean, look, LeBron and the Cavs know they can just flip a switch as we've talked about. What I want to do is go by uh, kind of player by player in terms of the Celtics, kind of what we expected going in. You know, their future with the team, kind of what their status is, if they're a free agent and so on. I'll start with Demetrius Jackson. Uh, what do you think his future is with the team? It's too bad because there's a kid from my home tech, August, from Marlboro, and he yep. voted name with Demetrius Jackson. So I watched them pretty intently, and he was awesome in college. So when the Celtics picked him in the second round, I kind of thought it was a steal. But then I was wondering, like, if he would get playing time, which he didn't because he's behind so many guards. But I don't think they're going to trade him because you can't really, like, get anything for him. So if they keep him and he somehow gets playing time i think he could start to be better and start to look more promising yeah i mean we saw him so little but i, I like what i saw from him thing i don't know if he's ever gonna get playing time because no. when we take faults even if we trade someone when we take faults then there's still a log jam so i don't know i think i think he'll be really good somewhere else though if he doesn't work out here and then kind of going on the same path jordan mickey another guy a lot of people kind of thought he was a steal out of the lsu and then he didn't really play that much which i was kind of surprised considering the lack of uh talented bigs that the celtics have but he didn't get like really any playing time yeah it was i don't even know how i feel about jordan mickey because you see him in spurts and you only see him when it's like either not that close or the celtics are desperate but, like, I would have liked to have seen him more at times because he's a better rebounder than Jarebko or Olenek, but he just doesn't fit in offensively. So I'm not sure what his future is here. Yeah, I mean, I imagine he's going to get some playing time. Same with Jackson, unless they're gone. I mean, you can't just have him sit on your bench. I mean, I guess you could, but... The thing is, I, though, I think if Yabusele comes in next year along with Zizic, who's supposed to come in, then he's just he probably won't get playing time. I think he doesn't have much of a future with us. No, unfortunately, probably not. But another guy that you never know could could go somewhere else and could uh, be good off the bench. I don't know if he'll ever be a prime starter or anything. But yeah, that's the thing with like a lot of the bottom players on this team is that we're a winning team, so they're not necessarily going to play with us. But they could be definite role players on other teams. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so now with the uh, people that did kind of contribute to a small, real small factor, but. Uh, James Young, he was out of Kentucky, drafted 17th overall. Again, really hasn't played that much, really hasn't done that much. I know he's really young, but as a free agent, I would imagine you just let him go at this point. Yeah, I mean, he's not worth the money. I thought he'd be better. It's kind of disappointing how how much he hasn't lived up to his draft pick in, like, what is it, three years now? Yeah, it was the same draft as Marcus Smart, so... Oh, yeah, he was that first Brooklyn pick, wasn't he? Um, was I thought, no, it wasn't Smart. A Brooklyn pick? No, Smart was when uh, we actually... Oh, yeah, no, we just sucked. Yeah. So, but yeah, but 
I mean, I didn't mind the pick at the time. 18 out of Kentucky, a great program, but he just hasn't done much. And as a free agent, I'm not wait. Honestly, I'm not wasting money on them. Yeah, that's the thing. The Celtics can't really afford to to risk money on him right now, but he's still really young. So I wouldn't be surprised if he still turns out to be not that bad with another team. Oh yeah, and someone will pick him up for sure. Yeah, um, even if it's out of the D League to start. Out of Kentucky, he was really good. Yeah, and a great shooter. It just couldn't get it together defensively. Consistency wasn't there, and neither was playing time. In fairness to him, but he somehow seems like slower than he was in college. While he sits on the bench, you're probably not as athletic and uh, up to speed. Yeah, probably. He doesn't see much time, and he doesn't. It's not like he's playing with the D League either. I I almost would have rather have him play in the D League more. Yeah, and same with Jordan Mickey. I'm not quite sure why not. Uh, you know. As we mentioned, Yabuselli and Zisage, it's not like they were clogging up spaces. They're overseas, so yeah, yeah. I think I think Young and Mickey are pretty much gone. Yeah, for sure. So getting more, a little more into the impact players. Again, we're still not exactly there. I'll start with Tyler Zeller, another big. Um, I mean, who I kind of like, but uh, seven footer, two fifteen. Man, it's frustrating to sometimes watch him play. Yeah, it's weird. I'm a I'm a North Carolina fan, so. Coming out of college, I thought he'd be better than he is. And there's like two Tyler Zellers, in my opinion. The one that I loved rooting for at North Carolina. And then the one that I absolutely like despise in the Celtics. I don't really like him that much. I think he's just, he's slow. He can't really shoot from like outside of 10 feet. So he doesn't fit us at all. Yeah, no, I think as another free agent, another guy to let go. Again, 7 feet, 250. It's kind of too bad. Uh, but... Gerald Green um, is another free agent. He had made comments after the season that he would like to stay, to me, beyond the veteran's minimum. I mean, I liked his ex- experience and his veteran leadership, and I know he played well uh, down the stretch a little bit, but, again, I don't know if you can keep him beyond the veteran minimum. I love Gerald. I, I think if – it depends what he means by beyond the veteran minimum because you could – I mean, if you could get him for cheap, then I would do it, but it's like – I wouldn't do it if you're not going to play him because he really he didn't play that much this year. I would have liked to see him more, actually, but he can definitely provide scoring off the bench like like a microwave, which is hard. to It's hard to find someone who just is willing to do that. So I wouldn't mind extending him a little beyond the veterans minimum, but it really depends how much you plan on playing him off the bench. Yeah. And with another guard coming in like Fultz, like you said, you know, how many guys are coming in? Yeah, it also, it depends what you do with, with Crowder and if you get Hayward and if you trade, like make a big trade for another star. It really depends what you do with that because then there's really no need for him. Yeah, and every dollar counts if you're going down that road. Yeah. Um, all right, so that kind of deals with the bottom end reserves. Um, let's do uh, Jonas or Jonas, however you want to say it. Uh, Jarepko, uh, another guy that I kind of wanted more playing time out of. I thought he played well last year in the playoffs against the Hawks. Really didn't see that much playing time. Um, what do you think his future is? I believe he's another uh, free agent. Yeah, he is. So, Is he a free uh, agent or does he have an option? No, nah, he's an unrestricted free agent. Uh, then, yeah, it's probably Sayonara, Jonas Jarebko. Yeah, I would have to agree, unfortunately. Uh, you know, another guy, you like to keep all these guys off the bench, but realistically, you know, you see these teams that are really good. They, they don't run eight nine ten deep it just doesn't really happen yeah in the playoffs i like jarebko a little bit like his main thing is being able to shoot and spread the floor and like get some hustle rebounds but it kind of pissed me off sometimes when he would get playing time instead of Jalen. i don't think for sure yeah i don't think you would have sacrificed much in terms of winning and then you would have given Jalen more playing time and more development but I don't know. I, I trust Brad Stevens with my life, so I'm not going to get too mad. Yeah, I mean, I didn't understand going to Jalen. Might as well skip right to him. I didn't really understand why Brad wasn't playing him early in the playoffs. I know he played a lot in the Cavs series, which it didn't really matter at that point, to be honest. I, I know he played the, some Wizards, but... I think for the Bulls series, he definitely... I think he like barely played at all, but I think he was... I think he was sick, which is why Brad didn't play him. And I, I, That's the only really explanation I know, because you probably could have used him more with like guarding Butler, just rotating him into guard Butler. But I don't know. It worked out fine. Yeah. What, what do you think Jalen's ceiling is? I mean, I just don't know. I know he's got the athleticism. I know he's got the body or he could have the body. His shot improved a little bit, but I just don't know what he is, to be honest. People love to uh, compare him to Jimmy Butler and even Kawhi, which I don't see as much because Kawhi is just he's special. But I think he's got – I'm not saying he's going to be better, but I think he's got potential – be better than Jimmy Butler because at 19 he is much better than Jimmy Butler was out of college at like 20 
one or whatever. Yeah, for sure. It's just the shot's got to improve. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long because you do really need another shooter on this team, and you'd like it to be him because his contract and his potential. Talking about another shooter on the team, I know you, uh, you're you not a big fan of him. I like him just because he's fun a lot sometimes, but uh, Kelly Olenek. Oh, God. Like I said, I know you don't like him, but obviously outside the Game 7 performance, which was... I don't know where the hell that came from, but that was awesome. A restricted free agent, again, it would all come down to me of what teams are willing to offer and see if you can match. With Kelly, it's it's part of why I hate him isn't really his fault. It's because Danny Ainge took Kelly Olenek, a seven-foot white dude from Gonzaga who looks like he's playing at a YMCA over Giannis Antetokounmpo, who's basically a seven-foot athletic freak who can do it all. I just... It never made sense to me why he did it at the time, and it still doesn't make sense now. But yeah, Kelly, he's a good, he's I guess he's a good bench guy for now. I would like, I mean, if the Celtics really want to contend, I don't think he can be a guy off the bench for you. No, I agree, and I honestly think some team might overpay for him. Yeah, that's... Or not, but uh, moving on to the next uh, second unit guy. Go with Terry Rozier. That's an interesting guy. Uh, showing some great potential. He's cheap. Uh, in terms of his contract, I would love. I would just like to keep him off the bench. But again, if that's a potential trade chip, I don't overvalue him either. Yeah, I, I like Terry a lot. There's there's part of me that thinks he might have more potential than Smart, just because Smart can't really get it together offensively, and Rosier looks like he he definitely could be a good offensive player. It's just Smart's much better defensively. But I don't know, Rosier. He's not untouchable to me, obviously, because not many, pretty much no one on this team is to me besides Jalen. But I don't know. I think Rozier, I, I would like to keep him unless he's part of a deal where you can fleece someone for a, a good player that could contribute. Yeah, I agree. And I know I had said at some point that uh, I honestly do think Rozier is better than Smart. I mean, I know his defense isn't there, but I mean, that offensive explosiveness that I've seen is probably just as good as Tom. Not just as good as Thomas. That's silly, but yeah. it helps. No, um, not that certainly there. It's not that ridiculous because he is really explosive. I got to see him while he was at Louisville, and he was ridiculous in that tournament. So he he's definitely like he can leap, and he's so quick with that first step. And he's obviously not as good as Isaiah offensively, but he's still a good offensive player who's not terrible on defense because he's not as bad as Isaiah because no one really is as bad as Isaiah on defense. No, which isn't really all his fault. I mean, Isaiah tries, which I know is not worth much. Um, but you never see Isaiah just take plays off, which he could easily do considering his height. You know, he yeah, can, I like, mean, oh, forget it. The effort is there sometimes. There's also some times where I see him just not really, not really doing a good job with help defense or staying near his guy. Yeah, and I and I think I, I do think a part of that is that he tries to conserve some energy for the offensive end because he is doing so much for us, which yeah, has to change. That's part of what it is. That's what like a lot of stars do, with, whether it be LeBron or Westbrook or Harden. They all take plays off in defense during the regular season. So I think that covers the bench. Oh, nope. We do have uh, the sixth man off the bench this year was uh, Marcus Smart. Obviously our first high pick in this whole rebuilding process. To me, he's a guy that frustrates the hell out of me, to be honest. Uh, I know he makes the hustle plays, the winning plays as... Uh, they call it, but I mean, what, how long do we have to wait for a shot to develop? It's like, come on. I, I love Marcus, honestly, because he just he gives effort that you don't really see in the NBA. Plus, he provides defense that you can't really find. He can he can pretty much guard one through five, if not one through four, at a really high level, which there's not many people in the league that do that besides like Kawhi and Draymond. So his offensive game hasn't really picked up like we thought it would, which is a little disappointing, but... Part of that also has to do with not playing as much as he probably could with another team because the more you play, the more you feel confident on offense and probably the more your shot goes in. So I think if you played more minutes, he'd be better offensively, but obviously he can't do that on this team. So do you think with drafting faults, though, what's his future? I mean, I personally think he's gone. It depends. I think I, I could see them trading Rozier over Smart because Smart fits more what they they want to build as like a as a – like a culture defensively and toughness. I think he fits more what Brad Stevens style is rather than Rozier. I guess you would just have to balance out what the value is for smart versus Rozier and what the return is. And you know, if the return is greater for smart, well, they I might be just better off keeping Rozier I, and the return. I think the return is, it's pretty, it's pretty close for smart and Rozier because smarts on a one year deal. And it depends whether the team wants to pay them. I mean, if, if the team that's trading for smart wants to extend them, then, he definitely gets you more, but if 
it's just a one year thing. Rozier is probably more valuable in a trade because he still has another year after and he's probably cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. I think that does cover the second unit in the deep reserve. So let's jump in to the starting five. Um, Amir Johnson, again, another player that frustrates me. Another big guy. I honestly think he's completely useless. I know that's really strong, but at his height, I, I don't understand why he can't just grab rebounds. I was kind of excited for him towards the beginning of the year because of Al, I'm like, okay, well, if Al can play around, move around, and shoot the ball, then all Amir has to worry about is really just staying in the paint, grabbing boards, and hopefully blocking some shots. He can't even do that. Yeah, Amir, it's weird. I used to like him a lot more than I do now because he used to be pretty damn good with the Raptors, and he people forget that he's still, like, one of the last people who went to the NBA straight out of high school. So he's been around for a while, so he's kind of been declining lately. But during the regular season, he didn't bother me as much. He still had his moments where I wanted to kill him because he just wasn't grabbing rebounds. But he, I think we definitely need to move on from him, and you need to find a real big man, a real center to play with Horford. Yeah, and it's too bad because it, I think he could have worked out a little better. But as a free agent, I think you got to move on. I kind of got frustrated towards the end of why we keep starting him. I know it didn't matter with the Cavs, but... You, you might know. be able to bring him back for cheap money if you get someone else like a real center because I don't see who's going to offer him that much money because he didn't really show that he deserved money this year. No, I could see Toronto maybe asking him back, to be honest. Yeah, that's possible. Um, it depends what they want to do with Ibaka. Yeah, and another free agent, which we'll get into in future podcasts for sure. Um, okay, so let's go with the most biggest free agent... Uh, for the Celtics has ever gotten in terms of money, Al Horford. Um, you know, a lot of people said he's underperformed, and the numbers certainly probably say he does, but Al Horford's never been a 2010 guy. But I thought, especially towards down the stretch, it seems that he got in the groove, and Isaiah Thomas, the season that he had, I thought Al Horford was a big reason why. Yeah, I, I love Al a lot. The At first, when... We initially signed him. I thought it meant we were getting Durant, and I think a lot of the reason we signed him was to try to get Durant, but he's still, I mean, he's obviously still a good player you want on your team. I thought, like, the contract, obviously, I still maintain that he's not technically worth his salary, but I still think I don't really care about the signing. Like, I like the signing. He's obviously, he definitely had a lot to do with Isaiah's big season because he just opens up the floor for him a lot more, stretching it out in just being a good passer and creating multiple options, which also creates space for Isaiah. So yeah. he's definitely a player that, I mean, he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, and I think he could have had a bigger season if they did have a legit big because I think he had to get, you know, stay in the paint a lot, and that prevented him from getting in the offense as probably more than he wanted to or less than he wanted to. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem with people who hate Horford is that he doesn't rebound as much as they want, but... I mean, that just tells me you didn't really watch him with his other teams because he was never a huge rebounder. Getting a real center would definitely help take a little bit of the pressure off him on the glass, which he still he still rebounded pretty well during the playoffs. So that's all I asked for. Yeah, and in terms of rebounding, I mean, you watch the Hawks games. It wasn't him grabbing the boards most of the time, making the defensive plays. It was Paul Millsap, Yeah, who actually is another free agent. It was really Millsap, and some of the guards helped with rebounding, too. So let's go to uh, Jay Crowder. Again, I don't want to repeat myself, but another guy that can frustrate me at times. Um, he certainly improved his shot. I will give him that. I thought he shot pretty well. To, again, it's just the lack of creating the shot that drives me nuts with Jay Crowder. I think he forces it at times. Um, obviously, is on a decent contract in terms of money. Uh pretty good bargain i think he's our best trade chip outside of any of the picks that we have it was a it was kind of a tale of two jays from regular season to the playoffs because during the regular season he really he did well he probably exceeded expectations i think he shot i'm not sure what he shot from three but i know it was really good and he obviously provided good defense like positions two through four for the whole season and he's definitely a part of what makes this team tough he's probably the heart and soul of the team but i'm not He's not untouchable to me. To some people, they really want to keep him. To some people, they really want to trade him. If he can get you a good return, I would trade him. Like, if he can get you a real center, I would trade him. But I'm fine with hanging on to him unless we sign Hayward. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i in the club of trading him. Obviously, I'm not in the club of trading anyone for just trading him. That's just useless. It doesn't help anyone. But I think if you can move him and get either a guy who can create his own shot a little better, whether it's Hayward or another trade 
uh, guy that you trade for, or like you said, another center, which they desperately could use. Uh, I think Ainge has to at least look at it. Next guy, we're almost done, but uh, Avery Bradley, I, th- you know, he had a great year. Um, he keeps improving every year. I know we say that, but his defense was top notch. His offense, uh, again, speak about creating shots. I thought he did that a lot better this year, but he is a free agent next year. Is it time with Fultz coming in, presumably, that you say, let's take a look and see what we can at least get for him? See, we disagree a little bit on Avery Bradley. He's like, he's my favorite player on the Celtics, and it's not even close. He just. He provides something that is very hard to find in the league, and especially in today's NBA, which is just like top five guard defense. And he does it better than anyone, maybe. Players always complain or talk about after the game that they just they hate going up against Bradley because he's so good. To me, if I think I would love to keep him, and part of the reason why I would trade IT over Avery Bradley is because I think you could get more for Isaiah, and I think Avery could probably he's probably a lot cheaper than Isaiah is so he can definitely help Fultz develop defensively and then playing against Avery in practice will help Fultz develop offensively too so I love Avery he he's definitely the injuries are a little bit of a concern but I would love to keep him long term yeah I mean we definitely disagree on him um again I liked him I'm glad we signed him again to another contract I know a lot of people said he was overpaid at the time I Which thought was, it was a good contract it was absolutely ridiculous when people thought eight million a year for four years was too much for Avery Bradley. It was it ended up being one of the best contracts in the NBA. Yeah, and I mean we could disagree and agree, but I guess I'll ask you in terms of Avery Bradley and Fultz, um, you know, I'm not expecting Fultz to play Avery Bradley like defense, but can he make up for an Avery Bradley a little bit? Probably I mean he's definitely never gonna be well I'm not gonna say never gonna be, but right away he's not gonna be as like even close to Avery Bradley defensively because technically he wasn't that good at defense at Washington, although he is like a playmaker on defense with steals and blocks, but on ball defense I think was a concern for him. But if he like replaces Avery in the backcourt, we're a lot worse on defense, I think. But if he replaced Isaiah in the backcourt, then I think Fultz's defense is better than it would be otherwise. And then you're a much better defensive team because you'd have so much length and just good athletic defense with Fultz and uh, Bradley at the two guard positions. Yeah, I mean, defensively, you would certainly be better. I mean, if you replace Smart with Thomas, you'd be better defensively. But yeah. to me, the problem is offense. You know, Bradley's not, like, the most consistent shooter. Fultz is going to have his ups and downs as a rookie. And, you know, it could get really dicey. I mean, you could shut down teams. But when you're going up against the Cavs, as we saw, with no Isaiah Thomas, there's no answer. You don't have any answer. Yeah, I think, I mean, Fultz obviously isn't going to be a 28-point scorer like Isaiah was this year. But when he comes in, he's going to be pretty damn good offensively already. He's probably the best offensive prospect since Kyrie or John Wall. So he will score right away, and I think the difference in defense between him and Isaiah combined with the fact that he's still a good scorer will help make up that difference a lot more than people realize. They probably wouldn't win as many games, clearly. I think they'd still be a mid-40-win team or maybe like 42 to 45 wins in the playoffs with Fultz instead of Isaiah. Yeah, and obviously that would be a decrease in wins for sure. I mean, if Fultz is really, you know, the next Wall, the next Irving, I know some have said Westbrook, but either way, an offensive point guard or shooting guard with Isaiah, I mean, I would like to at least see it and see how dynamic offensively they can get. Yeah, the thing is, Fultz can definitely play off guard a little bit, but long term, he really shouldn't be playing off guard. He he has so much height and length and vision that he would be a, a dynamic point guard, probably like one of the top five in the league once he's at his peak. In, in a league where you need a good point guard to score and pass nowadays, I think developing him is the priority and keeping him at point guard long term is the priority. Yeah, and I mean, Isaiah could play off ball a little bit in terms of get it, you know, just standing in the corner and shooting threes like Ray Allen did, or which yeah. obviously is not Ray Allen. But, um, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, Isaiah has to have the ball in his hand. He has to, the offense has to run through him. Well, who the hell else is going to run through right at this point? Because they don't really have any other offensive players that consistent that can create shots outside of Isaiah? Yeah, I mean, I think Isaiah could definitely play off ball a little bit because I disagree when when he went out and people said the ball ball moved much 
better without Isaiah. That might be a little true, but I think it's a little over exaggerated. Isaiah, that offense, the ball still moves a lot with Isaiah. I mean, people who say that just don't watch the Celtics all year if they think that. But yeah, and I mean, the ball movement's great and it gets people moving, but the problem with ball movement is it's more chances for the other team to get turnovers. And we did see that against the Cavs. They kind of started blocking down defensively, and that was pretty much it for the ball movement because there was none. Yeah, um, if, you were, if you were to play Isaiah off-ball with Fultz as point guard, both would just need to become a really good defender because Bradley hides a lot of Isaiah's defensive inefficiencies, and people don't really realize that. So Fultz would have to become a really good defender in order for them to play in the same backcourt. Yeah, and, you know, it'd certainly be interesting, Isaiah or Fultz or Bradley or Fultz, I mean, I'm looking forward to Fultz. I know you are probably more than me, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but it will certainly be interesting. Thomas, to me, is the guy that's going to decide the direction of this team. And whether it happens this year, I honestly kind of going in, I mean, I know it's June 1st. We're not even into the off season. But I've always thought, well, you know, he's either going to be extended or he's going to be traded. But now the more I read and, you know, the more you read, it almost sounds like they're just going to ride out with Thomas and see kind of where the chips may may land. I mean, listen, I love Isaiah. He's been the main reason why this team's been so fun to watch these past two years. But I definitely think he's not the future of this franchise, meaning that he's not going to be a part of the team that wins the Celtics 18th ring. But you can definitely – there's many options to go with Isaiah, whether you trade him this offseason, which I would prefer to do if you could get – a lottery pick from this year. I think that's enough for Isaiah that helps you build for the future and make sure you don't really lose that trade. But also, you don't have to trade him. I mean, it, it pretty much has to be a good trade. You could definitely play him and Fultz together, but I wouldn't sign him for more than three years because I think with the way he plays, the way he hits the ground and attacks, because people like to compare him to Iverson, he's going to have injury problems. And he already just hurt his hip. And that hip injury he had, not many people come back from and are the absolute same. So I don't yeah. think he's long-term the plan. Yeah, and it'll be interesting. I mean, I've read certain things on the hip injury, not like I'm a doctor by any means. But, uh, you know, some have said six to eight months. You know, just the injury alone, not Thomas in particular. If you just read up on the injury, it says six to eight months. You know, I don't really know what his trade value would be. If, I'm, if I was a Celtics and I was looking at Isaiah Thomas as a potential guy that they could trade for, you know, I would say, uh, I don't know, he's 28, 29. Now he has this hip injury. I'm sorry, but he is 5'9", so defense is always going to be an issue. You know, I mean, I know you wouldn't give up a lottery pick for that. Yeah, it definitely depends on what team it is. Like, I think, I mean, it depends how dumb the other team is. I think someone like the Kings would, since they have two picks, and since they regret missing out on Isaiah and letting him go, and they really, they're in a bad spot and they, they want to sell tickets because that owner's crazy. I think they would even give up that 10 pick, the number 10 pick for Isaiah. And then they would try to, they would max him out afterwards. Yeah. And I mean, I know it's not like Angie's problem, but I would feel awful to give send him back to the Kings. He would be completely and utterly pissed off at Ainge. If he ever uh, did that to him. Yes and no, because if he's getting the max, he would certainly be happy. I, I know he says he wants to win and everyone wants to win, but if he could get that max in Sacramento, the, we gave him that opportunity by letting him be a starter for our team. So he'd probably be a little mad that we traded him away after what he did, but we also gave him an opportunity to show what he is. Yeah, for sure. So if you were to come up with one word to describe this season, what would it be? Um building i mean i think we're building and we're stepping in the right direction we're not we're not close to a contender yet but we showed that we're young and we're here to stay for a while yeah for sure and i mean i couldn't argue with that i would say progress which probably kind of along the same lines um and with that last thing you said staying for a while that's what i hope we are um you know i know there's some debate and of course we've debated um off air about the future of the team and kind of can you contend while you build and all this? But I really hope so because as a fan, I'd, I personally don't want to watch Tank a Palooza or anything by any means. I mean, it depends what you mean by contend because if you mean contend, like really have a chance to win a title and build, that's not going to happen. But you can still be a fun, competitive team that's still in the playoffs and still developing your young guys. But either way, whether you go all in or whether you decide to trade Isaiah and or develop the young guys, whatever it may be, you're not going to beat LeBron or the Warriors. So the the priority is to develop over trying to be the third best team. 
Yeah, I mean, to me, when I say contend at this point, it would be, um, you know, hopefully a little better actually where we are, which I know is like, well, we're not that far off, but to me, we are. And I would like to go into a Cavs series and say, well, we're probably not going to win, but at least we have a chance. I mean, this series, we do absolutely no chance in hell are they going to beat the Cavs. But I'd like to go into the series and say, well, no, they're probably not going to beat them, but they could give them a run, a legitimate run of six games, maybe seven you know, something like that, because then I think you're you're really on the doorstep and showing the rest of the NBA that, hey, come to Boston, we're pretty damn close. Yeah, I mean, I think if you sign someone like Hayward, who's another scorer who can create, then you're obviously going to play the Cavs better, but I still don't know if you take them six or seven games, honestly, because LeBron really is just that good, and he's somehow getting better. So I don't see what moves you could actually make to actually give the Cavs a real run. So, I mean, if you can make those moves without sacrificing the future, then so be it. I mean, that's good. And then you're still taking away a little playing time from guys like Fultz and Brown. But if you decide not to do that and not to try to go after the Cavs because it's probably not going to happen, that's my option because then you really give the young guys more room and playing time to develop. And once LeBron is done and once the Warriors are done, those guys will be ready to contend. And then even then you could add another player that will help them really go over the top and win a championship. That concludes episode one of the All About 18 podcast. Make sure to visit CelticsDirect.com. Give us a follow on Twitter at CelticsDirect. And check out all of our latest posts as well as our widely popular merchandise.